we have executive producer and showrunner Stephen S. Tonight. The cunning Lord of the Ludus, uh, Quint uh, Quintus Beatus, played by John Hanna. His sometimes loyal partner, partner Lucretia, played by Lucy Lawless. Lovely social climber, Olympia, played by Viva Bianca. <laughs> Alright, so we have a lot of graphic art because, we, because of this, we, you know, we have a prequel and then we have season two both coming next year. We'll get a chance to talk about both. Um, John and Lucy, you guys must have been at least a little bit surprised to get a phone call saying, hey, come back to Spartacus. I'm still trying to get over the cunning lord of the Ludus. <laughs> <laughs> momentum of that the show had gathered, didn't want to lose the writers, you know, so um, it was a great way to fill in time while well, he was taking all the time he needed, and um, yeah, brilliant. Well, also Rob had uh, said to me last year about some holes in the, the, the backstory of Spartacus and myself and Lucy, and there would be two or three episodes where Batiatis would come back in a flashback sense to so as I say, fill some of that in. So when there when there was an opportunity to to look at those two or three episodes and find what that story was, I guess organically it turned into six episodes. So uh, yeah, no, it's, a, it's great to come back and get back to them in the same sort of way. writing the, uh, the, the prequel in terms of what you're going to do, what were your sort of goals in terms of the story? I approached it like I do anything, with fear and trepidation, <laughs> and then uh, with my fantastic writing staff we dove right in. Uh, thankfully, writing for these two is incredibly easy because it's such a joy with their characters and the way they portray them. And we had a lot of stories that we wanted to tell, uh, little things that we hint at in season one like Enemaeus' wife, Bodyos' father, that we really thought we could expand on. And instead of telling you about it in season two, we we're going to actually show it to you in the prequel. So John and Lucy, can you give us a little bit of hint, and you know, not too spoilerish, but a little bit of a hint in terms of uh, what your characters are up to in the uh, prequel? No. <laughs> We're in the last couple of then I'll find out next week in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> it hits the ground running though, I think. I was kind of surprised that so much is packed, so much action is packed. And I just don't mean physical action, but like dramatic action. But it really came out of the, out of the uh, with all guns blazing. That was amazing. It doesn't ease into the series, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we like to start it off pretty hot in the prequel. I, I think you guys will appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, season for season two, you know, can you I, give us a little bit of idea right what to expect? I was hanging in the green room, you're talking to the press, and I overheard two intriguing words, and that was massive battles. The big battles, yes. Uh, the thing about big battles for us, for all battles on this show, is it has to come from emotions, that somebody wants something. Crixus wants something, Spartacus wants something. And when we get into season two, these somethings become larger and larger. And uh, everybody knows that Spartacus led a, a slave revolt, a revolt of rebellion. And you will start to see that in season two. It will get bigger and bigger as we go along. One of the signatures of the show have been the gladiator fight scenes, but since now they're presumably on the run, I mean, is that going to take a backseat after the uh, prequel? Uh, definitely, you will get some of that in season two, but the battles will be outside of the arena. But we packed in plenty of arena action in the prequel that uh, uh, should keep you guys uh, in all the blood and gore you can handle. <laughs> so, you know, because the, the story, the overall story, is sort of known to you, do you have a certain number of seasons in mind in terms of how long you're going to take to tell a story. It's clearly you're, I mean, you know, they're already sort of on the run. You said Slave Rebellion is going to start. Uh, 10 or 12. 
see. Um, the, uh, you were talking about the battles, you know, there's uh, so much extreme sort of content there you set out to make this really hard R-rated show. What sort of, is there anything that you've come up with that you're like, no, no, I, I, I can't do that, or the network said, no, no, you, you know, can't do one that. One thing, uh, during uh, The Thing in the Pit, episode four, uh, yeah. Rob and I had pitched this thing where Spartacus is on the ropes in a fight and he bites out the neck of his opponent. And uh, that was the one thing that we were told, wait a minute now. I don't think the hero can bite the guy's neck out. So if you actually watch the episode, instead he pokes his eyes out. <laughs> I think that's better. Yeah, I guess that's slightly more acceptable. Let's see. For, for, for the Windows part, I guess, was there anything in the script that made you go like, uh-oh, I mean, well, maybe I won't want to do this. Oh, plenty. Every time, <laughs> every time I read it, it, you know, the sex scene, I, I sort of throw the script across the room and go, there's no way I'm doing that. And invariably, you sort of calm down and go, oh, they're right, that's really good. <laughs> because it's about something else, and um, you know, it looks horrific in print, they, at least they execute it. Beautifully, everybody looks magnificent on the show. And it's a concern. They fixed it in post. <laughs> oh, look, I can certainly say I was just as um, surprised and shocked by everything my character did as much as the audience would have been. <laughs> You started in the first episode, you're kind of, you know, a little ambitious, but overall sweet, and by the end of it, you're like, sort of a devious power player. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming either. <laughs> yeah, no, um, that was good. It was fun. It was really fun.